Hello, everyone. Hi. Thank you for joining us. Um, we Kristen, are Kristen, are you joining specials? I, I guess. <laughs> Kindergarten teacher, get out of here. <laughs> just, uh, we'll just wait a moment to make sure that everybody is with us. We'll get started. We're just waiting for our music teacher. Start at, and start at Okay, so I guess we'll get started. Um, my name is Ms. Cordroni, and I'm our teacher at George Miller, and we are the special area teachers. Thank you for joining us. We are going to go over um, some things that you should know about all your special area classes in each of our programs this year. Um, while it's a little bit different, we are all still excited to be here and to work with your children. So before I talk about art, um, I can just give a little bit of an overview of what's going on with special areas in general. We are working with classes for four weeks at a time. So your child, if they are in first grade and they have Miss Sinku, they will have art for four weeks and then they move on to have music for four weeks and so on and so forth. Each class has a schedule uh, to limit contact with all of the students that we have. Um, so we will see the students on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday, virtually on Wednesdays. So if your child is on an AJ, they will see us on Monday, and Tuesday, and then they will see us virtually for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, as of right now, each grade is Zooming for the first 15 minutes or so of each special. So when we rotate to our next group, you will be receiving our Zoom links. So your child can join from home if they're home and they can join us for our lessons for the first 15 minutes or so. Sometimes it's a little bit longer. Um, and also on Wednesdays, we do a short little Zoom. Um, sometimes it's to do a little project or answer questions. Every specialist is a little bit different. Um, so we'll send you the links so that you can get on. And then we also have a home learning plan where you can see what you're doing for that week in each given special. So it's a way to help stay on track, to see what lessons we're doing, and also to see what supplies you're doing What's that? What's that? Um, in addition to the home learning plan, we are also using Seesaw. So Seesaw is a great a site app that we're using to keep track of lessons. So you can document your art project if you're with me for art, or you can see the directions for Mr. Lenane's digital literacy project. Um, it's great to stay in contact. We can send messages. We can comment on student works. So we are each working on Seesaw with our classes as well. Um, we ask that everybody arrive to their Zoom on time if you are home and that you are prepared and ready to go. So that's just general special area information. Um, for art specifically, I will share my screen and you can see our presentation. So here's some info for myself. So this year I am teaching kindergarten through fourth grade. And we are still planning to have our art shows, which is great that we have Seesaw, so students can take pictures of their artwork so I can see it and we can save it for later on. Um, what's different about art this year is that you'll re be receiving an art kit. So each student will have a bag with some of the essentials in it, such as paper uh, and a paintbrush and some paints. So fully virtual students will receive that ahead of time. And then in-person students, when you come to school, I will be giving you the materials as we need them. All I ask is that at the end of the four weeks, if you have something such as paint or a brush, that it was returned to school um, so that I can sanitize it and clean it up and have other students use it later on. Um, otherwise, art is as good as it can be. We're on a cart, we're in the classrooms, but it's just as fun and messy. 
Uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to email you, uh, me. My email is on here, but it's kcorderoni at nanuetsd.org. I am the only Q in the district, so if you forget it, you can look it up that way. I'm the only Q right now. Um, okay, so let's move on, and I'm going to go ahead and let uh, Ms. Hink take over. Hey, thank you, Ms. Q. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> My name is Ms. Hink, and I am the librarian. And with me, students will work on learning their library skills and various types of literature and grow into loving books and reading. This year I am going into the classrooms. And if you still happen to have books from the spring, you can uh, send it in with your students, that's fine. If you notice um, over in the lower left corner, all of the students are going to get a bag to bring their library books home in. If they have library, hopefully they'll be getting library books. We're also building our ebook collection. And we also have instructions on the library webpage on how to access ebooks from home from the public library, as well as at Miller as well. And I look forward to having all of your students this year with me. Uh, thank you very much. And Ms. Q, who is next? Let's see. Mr. Lenane, would you like to go next? If, if I could hit next, I would. <laughs> I apologize. I think we're waiting on Ms. Q. I saw her run up. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, oh, music is next, all right. Okay. Whoops, are we going? Music? Go ahead, you're up. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right, uh, apologies everybody, having a bit of technical difficulties over here in the music room. Um, my name is Shannon Coakley. I am the new music teacher here. Um, I'm very happy to be joining the Miller family and to be getting to know all of your children and all the students here. Um, music is looking a little bit different um, as it normally would. Um, if you weren't aware, we are currently not allowed to sing unless we are 12 feet apart and most classrooms are set up to be six feet apart. So it's been interesting without um, doing very much singing. We've gone outside as much as possible. Um, and just a, a list in the middle here is um, some of the things we have been working on, rhythm, beat, non-singing vocal exploration, listening to music, reading and writing from the music staff, form, um, minimal as much as possible music, um, body percussions and sign language, and of course singing in our heads. So a lot of people done at home um, with the home learning plan and any um, virtual learning. Um, yeah, and if you need to reach me at all, I my email is over here. My phone number is down below that. And over here to the right is Nanuet Music Partners. It's um, a program we have here at Nanuet that supports our music and theater programs. And it also supports our students with scholarships and grants. So you could check out that website there. And I think I'm done, thank you. <laughs> And then I think that brings us to STEM. Hi, everybody. My name is Mary Rose Palumbo, and I am the STEM teacher here at Miller. We are so lucky that we have a STEM program for our youngest nights. We've, um, this is our fifth year that we have had this program. And I'm so happy that I get to be um, the STEM teacher in the afternoon. And some of you may know me as also being a part-time second grade math and science teacher. So I get to know all of the children in the building, which is really great. And then when they're in second grade, you get to see them even some more. In STEM, um, if you're not aware, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. We spend a lot of time working on our 21st century skills of our four C's, we call them, creativity, collaboration, communication, and critical thinking. The students are involved in um, engineering design process through different engaging activities and stories that we read. 
we like to try and make it as real life problem solving for them as it can be so they can be an engineer and, and solve problems that might happen in the storybook world. Um, the students identify problems that people may have or that characters in a book may have. We brainstorm solutions. We design plans. We draw them out. We label them. We create models of those things that we're using to solve a problem. We test our designs and then we improve them. Students are always excited. Um, when I walk into the room, usually the first thing they ask me is what is our, what's our challenge today? What's our problem that we have to solve? And they get really into it. If your child is learning from home, all of the problems that we do can be solved with any materials that you can find in your home, but start saving cardboard, um, some recyclable materials, and then any of their other building toys that may, they may have are great to use for STEM projects as well. Um, it's all really hands-on. STEM can be quite messy. So even though we're here in the classroom and we aren't sharing materials, we are still using materials to work with. Kids get their own individual bags of materials that they use, which will then be cleaned and sanitized before the next group gets to use them. So we have a lot of fun. Um, some of the projects that we've already done so far are building a tower that can balance one of their friends, their stuffed animal friends. We've worked on creating bridges. We've worked on creating houses with roofs and structures and working on using our creativity. So it's a lot of fun and I'm really happy to be working with all of the students, whether it's in person or virtual. So thank you for joining. So that brings me to me. Hi, I'm uh, Mr. Lenane, Dan Lenane, and I am uh, a technology teacher here. Uh, I'm at Miller and Highview, and instructional technology covers a bunch of different things, but some of the things that I'll be talking about with our kindergarten, first and second graders are digital literacy, internet safety, and coding. Um, going along with that, especially for our younger ones, they'll be using uh, learning to use the Chromebooks. Um, that might be new to some of our younger students this year. But it is very important that you send your child in with their Chromebook every day. Um, I might be doing a small activity on it. I might be doing a larger activity on it. There are, they are going to need that Chromebook every day. So that is very important. Um, just to be clear, my schedule is a little different than the rest of the special areas team. I only work with the kids on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So on Monday and Thursday, um, if you're in kindergarten, uh, I'll be working with the students at 1250. And just like Ms. Q was saying before, I will be Zooming for the first 15, 20 minutes of the lesson. It might turn into longer, depending what we're doing. Uh, first grade, I Zoom at 140 and uh, two, th I'm sorry, that's second grade at 140 and 230 for first grade. Um, so uh, as I said, I, I'll see the kids uh, in person on Monday and Thursday. And then on Wednesday, I'll be Zooming uh, with everybody. So just like the rest of the team, and the times are uh, down there on that slide. So it's 2 o'clock for kindergarten, 2.15 for first grade, 2.30 for second grade. Um, a lot of the things that we're learning about when it comes to digital safety and uh, digital literacy and internet safety is just how to be safe when they're using the internet. Uh, digital technology has become such a big part of your students' lives these days that these are some very important lessons they're going to need, not only now as they're younger, but as they grow older and um, the curriculum kind of changes for what their experience will be as they get older. So I work with these students starting in kindergarten and I follow them uh, in some cases all the way through middle school. So these lessons are going to stay relevant. They're gonna change based on what students are using for technology and what they're doing online. And we're gonna start uh, with a good foundation here at Miller. So if anybody ever needs to contact me, my email is there at the bottom of the screen. It's dlanane1, make sure you remember that one, at nanuetsd.org. And I look forward to seeing everybody's students and getting to know them. Hi, everyone. I guess I'm next. Uh, I am Sean Barron, and along with me in the same office here is Craig Pentamone, both of us working on physical education. Uh, this year, it's a little different kind of a year for physical education. Uh, if you peruse down the list, you'll see one that says uh, low organizational gains. Well, it's tough to do that with uh, all the COVID coming out now. So uh, Mr. Pentamone and I have really pushed the point of having more fitness, more flexibility with the students. All our activities right now are outside unless the weather uh, doesn't permit us. We will stay outside as much as possible. 
and uh, keep your kids in the fresh air as, as, as we can. Uh, as I said, we're working on our fitness. Uh, when we were when we do come inside, it's a little more rhythmic, it's a little more dance, a little more mo locomotive, but keeping to uh, a, a low key so that they're not uh, getting too close social distancing wise, but uh, getting the message. For skill wise and manipulative skills that they're doing, uh, so that you know, um, for safety reasons, we have numbered all their equipment so when it's passed out that it's that they know that that is their equipment to use from beginning to end of class and then after it's collected it is sanitized and put aside until the following week uh, so we are doing uh, as much as we can to keep your children fit over these times um, and they seem to be socially accepting it and very uh, happy still to come to gym uh, and and good. Uh, one of the things I do want to say is uh, when we are virtually with you, that uh, you know the kindergartens between two, uh, two fifteen, first grade two fifteen, and second grade two thirty. Um, Mr. Pentamona, I have picked out some some good fast activities for the students to keep them moving at home, and that we can keep up the level of fitness over the whole week is our main goal so that their activity level stays up. Uh, if you need to reach us at any point, uh, we are on the directory, uh, uh, same as uh, it's always been, sbaron uh, at nanuet.org, and you can leave any email that you would like, and the same for uh, Mr. Pentamon. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Um, all of the emails, as uh, Mr. Barron said, are on the directory. Uh, to summarize, please make sure that your child is prepared. If they're coming to school, make sure they have the appropriate supplies, their Chromebooks, bring them. If you're at home, make sure you're on time. Be on the lookout for our emails with our links and the appropriate times for each grade level to join us. And just reach out, we are here for you. We are excited to work with all of our students um, and we're going to have a great school year. So we hope you enjoy your evening and um, see you soon.
Chris, can you hear me? Are you there? I'm here. Chris, guys... Kelly is Kelly is here under Thomas. Can you let her in? Oh, I just let I just removed her. She has to try again. Okay, I'll tell her. Sorry. We have to unmute ourselves, right, guys? Do you have to unmute yourselves? Yeah. Unmute yourselves, yeah. Chris? I'm going to close my door. It's a little echoey. Let me too. Yeah, good idea. Good idea. Right back. How do I look? Right. You, you guys are live now. <laughs> okay. Oh, <we're> live. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody. Let me share my screen. Okay, where are my slides? And present. Okay, good evening, everybody. Welcome families of kindergartners. Thank you for joining us tonight for our first virtual Meet the Teacher Night. It's a first for everybody. Thanks for being here. So here's a fun picture of the kindergarten team. You'll have a, a fun and exciting year with this bunch of teachers, and we're happy to have you guys on board. So here's our first slide, which is going over part of our foundations, uh, part of our ELA program. Part of our ELA program, we use a, um, a program called Foundations. Foundations is our phonics and handwriting program. Um, the children are going to learn letter formation for all of the lowercase letters and all of the uppercase letters of the alphabet. With that, they're going to get sound recognition, learning uh, the letter sound and how it sounds in words and how to make that sound in isolation. There's print and word awareness in the program, rhyming. And then mid-year, like in the spring or the, in March and April, we're going to begin, or maybe even earlier before then, we start teaching the kids about blending to read three letter words. So that means um, CVC words, it's on the, the slide. That means a consonant, vowel, consonant, like a word like cat or fan. They'll learn to blend the sounds together to make words at the end of the year. And they'll be segmenting and spelling as well where they learn to segment words and hear the different sounds in a word to be able to write it. Another part of the program is diagraphs. At the end of the year, they'll learn how two letters sometimes work together to make one sound, like SH says CH CH says CH, and so on. And also in the foundations program, they learn sentence structure. We look at sentences and we put the sentences in order. They look at periods and punctuation, uppercase letters at the beginning of a sentence. And that's again, towards the end of the year in kindergarten. So this is our foundations program, which is part of our English language arts um, in kindergarten. So the next is good habits, great readers. And okay, hi everybody. I'm Mrs. Kennedy, and this is a continuation of ELA. So we do a lot of shared reading which we might use a big book and share the different contents of reading with the children. Building reading stamina, like we send home their uh, trick word books, learning to, to read on, to read a little quicker when, once they grasp a lot of main, of the tr main trick words and main words. Concept of print, understanding what words are, letters we start out with first. Um, taking care of the books is something we're working on right now learning about keeping food away from books and, and water and different things that would damage it and just taking care of the books as a reader. That's what good readers do. Um, making connections. Uh, we do a lot of that, you know, text to self, um, text to text, you know, where we, the kids can give us their experiences after they read a story, uh, which kind of goes into writing. So we do that on a daily basis. Retelling is really a, a big part of comprehension. That's a little bit later on um, when we start asking the children about the main idea, character, setting. Um, and we do that as a whole group, but then once they be become more of um, more independent, we'd be able to do that with them. Parts of a story, that's all different parts of the story, character, main idea. Um, reading to learn nonfiction. With nonfiction, children love to read nonfiction. Here's um, information books that they like to learn, especially in science and social studies. We use many of those books. 
And critical thinking is something we're always doing, taking them a step further of uh, the different question words, how, why, um, different reasoning of where they get their information and how they get it. So that's a big part of our ELA program uh, that comes from Good Habits, Good Readers. Thank you. Ms. Payne, you have to turn your mute, put, put your, yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay. Everyone, I'm uh, Christine Payne and I'm gonna talk to you about Writer's Workshop today. So we're just at the very beginning stages of writing, just talking to the kids about where we can find writing ideas, where writing is in our world, talking about the tools that we use like pencils and crayons and the kind of paper that we're using. Um, we also talk about how writers draw pictures. So for kindergartners, they don't know all the letters and the sounds and the words. So right now, a lot of their stories are just pictures. So um, the drawing part is important for them. And so we teach them how to draw different things and how to add setting to their story by drawing things in the background. So the, um, the drawing is a big piece for them. Um, we talk about where they get their ideas from. We use things from like idea charts or just thinking about their day-to-day -day things that are happening to them. Um, uh, they talk about what they know, things they know a lot about, things they're interested in, and those are things that topics they start to write about as the year goes on. Um, we also explore a lot of books and look at a lot of authors' styles, and then we emulate those styles. We do things like we read a lot of alphabet books, and then we create our own alphabet books. We read a lot of counting books, and we write counting books. So we look at different author styles and um, include that in our writing as well. Um, we do personal narratives this year, and that's when the kids write up their own stories, things that happen to them. And we try to have them sequence things, beginning, middle, end, what happened in their story. We give them opportunities to um, give their opinion and back it up in writing, and they usually like that. It's really fun. And we do some list books where they create lists on things and write about that. And then uh, towards the end of the year, we um, do nonfiction writing where they research something or talk about something they know a lot about, and then they do some nonfiction writing and give facts. And, you know, they're always illustrating as we go along. That's a big part of our writing program. Good evening, kindergarten families. I'm Miss Rio, and another part of our ELA program is learning our trick words. So trick words are words that cannot be tapped out, they cannot be segmented or sounded out. They really just need to be memorized. Um, or just learn by sight. So we have our high frequency readers, it looks like this. They go home about once a week and these books are filled with the trick words that we have learned that week or in previous weeks. Um, it helps kids to have one-to-one -one correspondence. You'll see in the books they have the black dots under each word that encourages your child to use their little reading finger and put it on the black dot as they're reading each word. And as you can see, the trick word books have the trick words in them, as well as whatever words are in the book, they use the pictures to help them. We also sent home the full trick word flashcards. So we had encouraged families to cut them out and put them in like a clear plastic baggie. And these words are to be used daily or often in your home, just kind of drill to your child um, all 16 trick words um, as often as you can. Oh, that's me. Hi everyone, I'm Kristen Broderick. I am going to talk to you about our math program. Um, we are using Envisions, which is an online math program. Um, it's a digital platform that we are using. Um, it involves playing games with the kids. It does real life problem solving. Um, we address all the standards throughout the year for the math, counting cardinality, operations and algebraic thinking, number and operations to base 10, measurement and data, and geometry. What we've been doing is we've been trying to not overload you with all the math papers. So we've been giving you each topic. We are finishing up with topic one. So we will be starting topic two this week. So it's just very important that your child brings back their math folder with the math papers in it every time that they come physically to school. That way we could do the math um, problems with them and they'll have all their, all their materials with them. Great, thank you. 
Hi, everybody. Uh, Mrs. Kennedy, we're going to be doing social, we're doing social studies, um, which is really kind of a big part of our ELA program, too. Um, so we integrate with literature, many different books that we enjoy. Um, we talk a lot, as you know, with you've been doing at the beginning of the year, they talk about themselves um, and others. How to be a good citizen is a big part of our social studies program, um, you know, in the classroom. Uh, making good choices, following the rules, um, what they have to be responsible for now at home too, being a student when you're doing virtual and uh, taking pride in what they do. Um, understanding the economics and character and words of the month is a big part of our program here in school. Um, so this month it's responsibility. So um, the kids, you know, we read the stories to them and talk about what they're responsible for. Respect is always something that's ongoing. Patience, determination, grit. Fairness, caring, honesty, kindness, pride, and volunteerism. And those are kind of always ongoing, but we really have those words stand out each month and follow through with our um, curriculum. So the kids enjoy this. <clears throat> um, science, that's me. <laughs> so I didn't introduce myself before, everyone. I'm sorry. I am Jenny Jovanovic, kindergarten teacher here. Sorry, I forgot to tell you my name. So our science program is called Science 21. And our program is integrated with lots of literature, big books and read alouds. Our three units in science are, and these are in order, we start off with weather and climate. Um, the children learn about severe and normal weather and um, what those weathers, what the, what the type of weather looks like. Our next unit is forces and interactions. And the last unit is animals, plants, and their environments. And in that unit, the children um, get to uh, explore different habitats for animals. We've had ladybugs in the past, and we've studied them and watched how they live, what they eat, and where they, and how to create a habitat for them to live within our classroom. That was um, part of the end of our science science program in kindergarten. We would do it in the spring. And a lot of the Science 21 activities are hands-on, where they're building and creating things and um, playing games, especially with forces and interaction. It's a wonderful program and the children really enjoy it. Um, I'll also talk about technology. So the technology that we use in kindergarten, um, all these programs that you see the icons on the screen are the programs that we use, so something that we started using so far in kindergarten is Seesaw, which is new for us as kindergarten teachers as well and new for you guys. It's um, been the platform for where we're sharing our at-home learning plan to you guys. And it's also um, a place where the kids can participate in activities on the computer and we can see that they're participating and um, using some of the, the activities that are on Seesaw for us to use. We also have used in Math, which is where um, the children watch the videos that go along with the lesson every day, and we're live streaming it to build that classroom as well. It's a very, um, it's, a, it's a digital platform, our math program, and that's a lot of online activity. We also use Dreambox later in the year, which is a math, um, math software where the children practice their math facts. Um, Raz Kids not, is a reading um Reading technology or reading software where the children get to books on their level, and we're going to start that soon. And um, which one did I not talk about? Starfall. Starfall is something that we also have already started using, and that's just a um, a website that anybody can use, and it has a lot of letter recognition and letter sound activity for children, which is perfect for beginning of the year kindergarten. So those are some of the programs that we use in kindergarten. Oh, that's me. Uh, lunch and recess, everybody's favorite. Love to eat <laughs> and play. So uh, it's mostly half and half, 20 minutes for lunch, 20 for recess. So we, our goal really is to always get the kids outside. Um, so on any kind of weather, you know, you know, except for rainy days, obviously, remember to, you know, send them in with the jacket, um, you know, that they're warm going outside. Um, proper shoes, sneakers, you know, we would prefer, you know, rubber soles because they are running around, especially on the black top since we're spacing out a lot. Um, we really strive for independence, meaning we really love for you to practice with them at home. Um, even if they're buying, just how to open up a container, juice box, a milk box, 
um, anything, you know, a sandwich bag. Um, that's a big thing that we straw, you know, wrappers with the straws. Um, those are really important and learning to put their garbage away, learning to throw things away and be responsible. Um, and then just, um, you know, be ready to have a good time during lunch and recess. <laughs> Okay, and following that up, snack time. So we have snacks in our classroom. Um, we use the bathroom, we do our hand wash, we sanitize. Um, we would ask that you send in snack in a separate bag than lunch, um, labeled of course. They really just need one snack, one drink. We don't really have a lot of time for a snack, so it should just be you know, something we try and ask that you keep it healthy. Um, if they do have some stuff from their lunch, there may be time to finish that if they are still hungry after that. Again, easy to open containers just really is so helpful for us. Um, and then again, just like lunch, you know, independence, using their manners, you know, can you please help me? Thank you so much. And just responsibility. They know their job is to put their stuff away when they're done, to wash your hands, sanitize. And I have to say, they've really been doing such a great job with it so far. So thank you so much. Okay, this is me. So um, one of the programs that we are introducing to the students this year is the RULER program. And RULER is really an acronym for um, a few specific words. We started this program last year with the whole staff and now we're rolling it out to the students. Um, so if you look here, you can see RULER stands for, the R is for recognizing your emotions. That's a big part of what we'll be working on. U is for understanding the cause and consequences of emotions. L is for labeling emotions. And a lot of vocabulary goes along with that. E is for expressing emotions and you know doing it in the appropriate way. And R is regulating emotions with helpful strategies. And so there's a whole program put together that e, you know each week we'll be working on and uh, showing the kids that will um, address all these things. Um, Ms. J, if you just change, I'll go into. Thank you. So we have some tools that we use um, in the ruler program, and these tools are like the the pillars of what we'll be teaching them and they'll work off of these. So I'll start talking about the mood meter. So the mood meter for the kids is a chart with um, these different colors. Then they, they uh, look at how, um, how they're feeling, you know, what their emotions are, good or bad, wherever they, they fall, they plot them on this mood meter and um, they learn a lot of vocabulary. And we talk about these different emotions, what they look like, what they feel like. And um, it's just something to make them think about how they're feeling at certain times. Um, the charter is something that we'll be working on with the classes, and that is asking the kids, how do you want to feel at school? How do you want to feel when you're here and you think about what's important? And then you develop this charter so that we're always working towards making everybody feel the way they want to feel when they're at school. Um, the meta moment is um, when kids start to internalize their own feelings. So they sense how they're feeling. They can pause and think about how they're feeling. They see their best self in whatever situation they're in, and then they have strategies to help them act it out. And the last one that we'll work with them on this year is the blueprint. And the blueprint is strategies for um, resolving and de-escalating conflict. So if there's a little conflict, what are some of the strategies we can work through to get to, to that? So those are the, the um, four really important things that we'll work on this year. It'll take us some time to get through them. Um, so currently um, we're working Emotion ma motions matter. Then we'll get to community safety and climate, and that will be where we work on our, our charter for the class. We'll work on self and social awareness, um, and then regulating how we can do that with our meta moments. And we'll work on things like empathy, uh, perspective taking, and community restoration, and that's where we do the, the blueprint. So all of this is in there. Our feeling words are embedded. You'll see this week in um, what we do tomorrow for our Zoom and also for the writing this week, we have four words that are really our strongest words for kindergarten, and they are um, the feeling of being sad, happy, calm, and angry. And we'll focus on those four a lot, but then also branch out. So you'll see this coming through every week, and it's, it's, a, it's a nice program for the kids, especially with everything that's going on right now, for them to really think about how they're feeling and what their emotions are. So that's ruler. <laughs> that's me. Hi, it's Ms. Ruse again, and I'm here to talk about the tools and materials your children are using this year. So first we have the map folder, it might look like something like this, it might be a different color. Um, this map folder goes to and from school every single day. Um, 
when you send your math folder in, please remember inside should be the topic pages that we're working on um, because we do the lessons in person in school and I need these, um, these pages to complete the assignments when in school. So please make sure it's filled. Don't ever send the math folder empty to school. So that's our first um, tool we use. Then we have our dry erase boards in our clear pouches with our dry erase pen. So this is to be kept at home at all times. And this is what they're using to form their letters for foundations. We also use it to practice our number writing. So again, this tool is to stay at home and to help you at home. Next, we said that F toolkit box. That's also um, a material that should stay at home at all times. Um, and that's just to help your child if you need some manipulatives or um, just different materials to help them with that day's math lesson. Um, and that again is to be used at home. Then we have our trick word flashcards. So everyone at home should have cut them out and put them in this little baggie. And again, these are to help your child memorize those trick ones. Remember, they can't be sounds out. So you just have to practice, practice. You can find fun ways to do that with your kids. Um, and again, this little baggie also stays home. We have our Chromebooks, which we will be using in school and for home. Um, your teacher might have emailed you certain weeks to bring it in or certain weeks to keep it home. So look out for those emails. Um, and again, that is used at home and in school. Recently, we also sent home your foundations practice kit that looks like this. This is also um, a material and tool that is kept home. And this is to help your child. Um, I know we do like on our morning meetings, many of us do the magnetic letter tiles. So your child's going to be using this as we're doing that whole class. Um, and these are a lot of our foundation materials that we use daily. So your child can have those materials at home when they are not in school. And lastly, we have the additional math practice book. So this is to be also kept at home. And I just ask that you don't go ahead in the practice book, but really be working on those additional pages that coincide with whatever lesson that we're doing that day. Um, so we're starting topic two soon this week. So those are the additional practice weeks that you want to be looking at, okay? So that it kind of correlates and matches with that day's lesson. Another tool we have is our tripped word um, book bag is to be sent home. So this also is kept home. Your child will bring home a high-frequency reader every week. And they're going to take it home. It stays home and it goes in their trick word baggie at home. These should be practiced very frequently. Have your child read it to you, read it to a, have them read it to a sibling. Um, and these are to be always placed in their baggies at home when they're sent from school. So this way, they have all of their books in one place so that they can just pull out a book and read it to a family member. Thank you. Oh, communication, that's me. So, um, you know, every day you, you have a homework folder, I call it, or, or you know, folder that goes home. So please check those daily every day um, when your child's in school, empty the folder out. And if there's any important papers to put in, please put them back in the folder. And if you have any notes for us, a different way of going home, dismissal change, you could also give us a handwritten note and put that in the folder. Um, that's really important to do that. And um, please remember to bring that back and forth to school. There's also the digital backpack that um, Ms. Griffin will be sent, sent school-wide. Usually you get like a text alert and it'll let you know through email what's going on. It's very important to please keep it on, on track with those. Um, if you have any concerns, um, please remember we have all of us have emails. That's the best way to communicate with us. So um, you can find our email. I'm sure you have all of our emails by now, but they are on the website. Um, and also check for Seesaw. Seesaw is a new you know, program we've been using. So there are assignments and class, sometimes class announcements on those. And uh, again, you can look up the, uh, there's the school website to find out any other email addresses for other teachers too that your, your child may have. Last slide, our goals this year, as we 
all been saying, and you all know, this year is definitely not a typical year. And we are all in this together, us here, you guys home, and we're just going to do it day by day. And we've been doing amazing and your kids are amazing and they are so resilient and we are just so thrilled and so happy with how our year has started. Um, so our goals, regardless for all of our children this year, we just want all the children to begin and build on friendships. We want them to feel comfortable to take risks and to try new things. This is the time to do it. And they're so sweet and so innocent. Just go for it. We want them to learn to share and to cooperate. We want them to grow in their self-confidence. They are going to bloom this year. You are going to be amazed to see how they came in and how they are leaving. It's the best. We want them to become independent and to become responsible choice makers. Most importantly, we want them to know that school is a happy place. It's a safe place. They are great here. They are great on the computer with us and on our Zooms. They're gonna to learn to read. They're gonna to learn to write all at different times. It's so developmental, don't stress. The most important thing is that they are safe here, they are loved, and they're gonna have a great year in kindergarten. Our littlest Golden Knights are the best. Go Golden Knights. Back all to you. Right. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Oh, Hi, Jenny. Jenny. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. For Thank Thanks Thank for you. Have Bye. a good Thank day. you for coming. Have a great night. <laughs> Thank you, kindergarten families. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a good Bye. night. See you tomorrow on Zoom. Bye. <laughs> How do we get out? <laughs> how do we get out? Hi, Chris. Hi, I don't know how to get out. <laughs> oh, we're in first grade. Delores, you can start whenever you're ready. Okay, thank you. Welcome first grade families to our Meet the Teacher Night. My name is Dolores Wayne. I'm the first grade team leader. And I would like you to meet with some of my other colleagues on the team. One second, I'm sorry, my video is not on. Oh, it is, sorry. Here we have the first grade team. I'll start on the left with Mrs. Smith. Ms. Fizzanola, Mrs. Wayne, Ms. David, Mrs. Larkin, Ms. Hilbert, and Mrs. Mm -hmm. Ms. Hilbert. Hi. Hello, I'm Katie Hilbert, and I'm going to get us started by talking about our math program. Just like in kindergarten, we're using the Envisions 2.0 program. This is a hybrid of print and digital learning. The program is very flexible, providing different components for us to create our lessons. Most of the lessons have a visual learning video, guided practice, and independent practice. A vision, Envisions also allows time for fluency practice. It's incorporated at the end of each topic, but in first grade, we do a lot of daily warm-ups before our main lesson, and we provide opportunities for math games to practice our fluency as well. At the end of each topic, we have an embedded assessment, and we use this to further guide our teaching and to meet the needs of our students. The math toolkits are really important um, for first graders, so thank you very much for keeping them in their backpacks. I'm so sorry.
That's okay. Can you see it now, everybody? Yeah, you're all good. A little, Sorry, a little everybody. Different. So this was everything that Ms. Hilbert just explained. <laughs> the technical difficulty. Um, I'm not going to do it again, but I <laughs> no. not toolkits. So again, thank you, everyone. These um, materials inside the toolkits, the manipulatives, um, the, the uh, mat work mats that they have where they can do dry erase practice, they're really important. And uh, we just want to thank you for making sure they get to school every day. We appreciate it. Thank you. Hi everybody, I'm Shannon Davin and I'm going to be talking about our phonics instruction. So the program we use for phonics instruction is called Foundations. Um, and foundation, Foundations includes daily instruction in all of the following things. So we have phonemic awareness. So that's um, your child's ability to hear and identify different sounds. Then we cover phonics, word study, and spelling. So that is where we talk about sounds and different word parts, and we learn how to tap to spell and read words. So you might see your child when they're reading and they come across an unknown word, they might lift up their arm like this and start tapping out words. Um, they're trying to tap to read or decode. And then if they are spelling and they're trying to write a word that they're not sure of, they might do the same thing, tap out the sounds and write down the sounds that they hear. So that's um, what we cover in foundations. Uh, we practice this um, by doing dictation with the dry erase board. So that's what you see a picture of on the screen, the white board with the lines. Those are our foundations lines. And you have they, the students have one in school and they also have the dry erase um, pouch at home for on their at home days. And then we also practice with the foundations letter tiles. So that's um, what you see at the bottom of the screen, the different letters, uh, pink and yellow. We have magnetic letter tile boards in school that we use. And then at home, you just received either last week or today a Ziploc baggie filled with those letters. So that is going to stay at home and they will use that for phonics, uh, foundations instruction on their at home dates. Uh, we also cover vocabulary in the foundations program. So vocabulary is really weaved in throughout all of the units. Often we'll have a word of the day where we talk about um, tapping out the word and what it means and we'll use it in a sentence. Our sight word instruction is also part of our foundations program. So in foundations, we call the sight words trick words and there are new trick words introduced in each unit. We also work on fluency in foundations. So each unit has a fluency passage and we use that passage um, to read. So they decode the words within the passage. They are able to um, identify and read those trick words in a text rather than in isolation. And then we also use um, those passages to work on our reading fluency. So reading with appropriate phrasing and expression. And then handwriting is something else that we focus on a lot in foundations. Um, it was a big focus in our first unit that we just completed. And it's something that we reinforce throughout the year. Part of our ELA, which stands for English Language Arts, is our Good Habits Great Readers program. This program has seven different units talking about the seven habits of great readers. The seven units are great readers see themselves as readers, making sense of text, using what they know, understand how stories work, reading to learn, organizing ideas and information, and thinking critically about books. We go into uh, items as, as, as far as uh, children learning to care for books. They choose books to match their reading level and also their interests. Once the children are more comfortable with that, we then go on to building reading stamina, which means how long they can sustain reading to themselves. Students also will be introduced to making predictions and asking questions while they're reading. Students will then uh, learn how to summarize what they've read and give us a retell. We like to focus on giving a clear beginning, middle, and end. And we might also word it as first, next, and then, 
and just giving them different ways to organize how a retail would sound. Um, we also go into uh, features of nonfiction text. We speak about the different genres and we go into comparing how a fiction story might look compared to a nonfiction story. And nonfiction would hopefully be easily identified by them by having certain features such as the table of contents, um, real photographs, possibly a glossary, and headings in the story. Hi, my name is Sandy Pizzola, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about our writing instruction in first grade. Um, we want children to have a love for writing. Um, your children have been participating in writing workshop throughout the week, where they are learning how to become authors and illustrators of many different types of writing. In our writing workshop launch, the children have begun to create an idea page full of topics that they are interested in, and there's a, a um, a snippet picture on the slide there. When children can choose their own idea, it creates motivation and this ownership helps to foster greater independence. Soon we will be creating a variety of lists, which is the foundation for our pattern block unit. Excuse me, pattern book unit. <laughs> Later on, we will have an author study on a favorite children's author named Jan Brett, and she's writing a picture of her right on the slide there. Another unit will be on how to write friendly letters. We will also be creating opinion writing pieces. Next, the children will create a nonfiction piece on a favorite animal. And finally, we will reflect on our year as first grade authors and illustrators and create a memory book. Throughout these units, we have direct instruction on sentence organization, proper writing conventions, such as spacing, capitalization, and end marks, as well as reinforcing our foundation spelling rules. Hi, I'm Jennifer Smith. I'm going to be talking to you about our science units that we will be studying this year. Our first unit is called Space Systems, Patterns and Cycles. Um, all of these units we study through the Science 21 program. Um, and in this first unit, students will be making observations of the sun, moon, and stars. And they're going to discuss and observe patterns that could be predicted with the moon. Um, our next unit is, on, is about waves regarding light and sound. Um, this unit will introduce young scientists into the physics of light and sound. Students will learn the cause and effect relationship between vibrations and movement. And our last unit is structure, function, and information processing. And in this unit, students will learn how plants and animals vary from young to an adult and how animals use survival and communication skills to survive. Hi, first grade families. My name is Kelly Larkin, and I'm here to talk a little bit about social studies. In this school year, your child will learn about topics such as school workers, schools long ago, family changes, as well as family decisions, community workers and community changes, resources around our land. Within each unit, we will learn map skills and graphing skills, as well as other skills. Our weekly reader magazine will introduce monthly topics for discussion as well. Hello families, I'm Michelle Sinkyu and I will be discussing RULER. RULER is an approach to so social and emotional learning designed to include everyone and to be integrated into all aspects of the school. RULER provides everyone in the school community, children, teachers, staff, administrators, and families with tools that translate into life skills. Here are the tools we will be discussing with your children this year. Tomorrow, we will be introducing the mood meter. Some of the students have um, brought home the mood meter information. If your child has not, he or she will be getting it uh, later this week. 
but the mood meter is a self and social awareness tool that we can use to better recognize and understand and label our own and other emotions. The charter is an agreement. The group makes about how teachers and students want to feel in their school and in their classroom. A meta moment is the time between the experience of an intense emotion and how we respond to that emotion so that we can make better choices. The blueprint helps us problem solve effectively around conflicts and self-reflect. Listed on the screen are the units that we will be discussing for the school year. We will be discussing these units on Wednesdays during our Zoom meets. Hi, Mrs. Smith again. Um, we just wanted to quickly review um, our technology that we use in first grade. Um, I think the children have really become more independent in using the seesaw to start posting and responding to assignments. So they've been doing a great job with that. Um, the students are using Smart Ants and Raz Kids, Dreambox. Um, I just, we just wanna remind families at home that these programs are adaptive. So we really want the children to complete these lessons independently. So then the programs can uh, meet each child's needs and it will adapt and change to whatever your child will need at that time. With the RAS kids also, um, another reminder that the children are supposed to first listen to a story, then they will read the story next, and then they take the quiz. Um, and if they follow in that order, then they receive all the stars that they really enjoy earning. And um, the last little icon at the bottom, you'll probably recognize this from our students links and resources page, um, is our Envisions program it has an online com component as well. And the children will um, at times be logging in to complete assignments. We wanted to just thank you all for coming. And we hope that you have a good rest of your night.
Hello, everybody. Welcome to our second grade Meet the Team night. My name is Mary Rose Palumbo, and I am the team leader. And I wanted to take this time to thank you for joining us tonight while we share with you um, what, your what your children will be learning while they're in second grade with us. Just a little bit about myself. You will meet all of the other members of our team um, as they each present you something about our curriculum. Just a little bit about myself. Um, I've been here in Nanuet for 34 years. I am in a second grade classroom as a math and science teacher for part of my day. The other part of my day, I am a STEM teacher. So your children may have met me in STEM over the years. Um, and I'm really glad that you're all here joining us. So let me just share with you a little bit about our math program. We use a program in Visions. Your children have been using this program since kindergarten. It is a comprehensive program. These are some of the topics that we'll be focusing on this year. Children are engaged in doing math and moving through concrete and pictorial and abstract um, activities. We will focus this year a lot on number and operations and algebraic thinking, as well as measurement and data. We're going to be um, working on getting our facts fast, knowing fluently, being able to add and subtract within 20. Our goal is by the end of the year that children will know from memory those addition and subtraction facts. We'll be working a lot on place value understanding of our number system, our hundreds, tens, and ones, and using the place value properties to add and subtract larger numbers. Throughout second grade, we work on adding and subtracting up and through a thousand, which is the kids hear that number and they think it's um, a really big number. So they get excited about that. We will also be working on a Word problems is another big focus in second grade. Um, children will learn the different strategies that they're learning for addition and subtraction up until 20. They'll apply those strategies with larger numbers and use that in their word problems. They'll be using um, different models and tools to help them show their math thinking and being able to solve a problem using multiple strategies. You might see some things like 10 frames or base 10 drawings or bar diagrams or number lines that will help children to organize their math thinking to be able to solve problems. Additional topics that we're going to be working on this year include time, money, and geometry. Um, a great thing to do at home when you're looking to do some more math learning with your students is to practice counting coins, identifying coins, practice telling time on an analog clock, as well as playing math games, which are always great fun to do. So, and next, um, Ms. Duffy is going to share with us some more information about math. Thank you. My name is Ms. Duffy, as Ms. Palumbo mentioned. I've been in education for 12 years. This is my third year at Miller and my first year in second grade. I'm gonna to talk to you tonight about two of the math and technology programs that were used to supplement our instruction. The first one is called Dreambox. It's an adaptive and interactive program that's designed to meet the needs of the students at their levels. The goal is to complete at least five lessons per week. And it adapts within a lesson to offer the child either a skill building or enrichment activity, depending on the answers that they provide in the program. There's three main phases. Oh, thank you. There's three main phases for this program. The first is conceptual understanding. In that phase, the children begin to make sense by exploring and using tools. The next level is finding structure, and it's, that's a shift to move into deeper understanding and more strategic thinking that supports different relationships in math. And the last phase is procedural, and that's where the skills and fluency come in. The other program that we use is the Reflex Math program. Reflex Math is also individualized, and it's a facts fluency program. The students start by taking a fluency assessment that measures both accuracy and speed. As they move through the program, they have a host and a coach that will help them progress. The program assesses knowledge of fact families, and we as teachers can see which facts have been mastered and which ones the students need continued practice with. The games are designed to be both fast paced um, we, and they also have different awards like tokens to be used at the end of the games and that's to help motivate the children. So those are the two programs that we use um, to help build their math, math foundation. Um, next will be Ms. Gillis to introduce foundations. 
Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name is Jamie Gillis, and I've been a teacher here at Miller for 21 years. I started here as a first grade teacher and taught first grade for eight years, and I've been in second grade ever since. I'm going to talk to you tonight about the Foundations Program. This is the same program that your child has been using since kindergarten, and it is a wonderful, wonderful program. This program systematically and comprehensively instructs students in both phonemic awareness as well as phonics, while contributing greatly to these other areas, fluency, vocabulary development, and comprehension. Most of the units um, are two weeks long. So throughout this two, the two weeks, the children will be taught a new spelling pattern or patterns and they will have multiple opportunities to practice the new sounds and patterns through daily dictations, readings, and other activities. In addition, uh, they will be introduced to trick words each unit. These words are the words that appear most often in print, and while some are phonetically regular, many are irregular and therefore need to be memorized. So we're going to suggest that the index card type um, things that are coming home each week with the words. If you can make those words very visible for your child, cut them out, put them on a nightstand, hang them on the refrigerator, um, put them on the back of the bedroom door, and just really give your child many opportunities to practice reading these words as spelling them um, as often as you can. It will just be of, of great help to them. Approximately every two weeks after the unit is done, there will be a unit test and the results will always be shared with you. They will be sent home. Um, we have two programs to help support with foundations and the spelling. Uh, the first one is Spelling City and it's a wonderful research source um, and it's easy to navigate and it includes all of the trick words as well as most of the words that they will find on the unit test, but not all. The goal is to not memorize these words. It's more about applying the patterns that we're teaching to their everyday writing. So whereas we were taught, um, you know, when we went to school, given a word list, you studied them throughout the week, you got them on Monday, you studied them till Friday, and then you were tested on them. That's really not the goal of this program. And I've just found it to be very successful. The more they apply the um, rules to the language, the more successful spellers that they are. The other one, um, the other program that they've been using is Smarty Ants. Again, this is a very familiar program to your children. Um, it's an online reading program that uses more of a game-based um, learning style to help them build their literacy skills to become the strong readers that they need to become. And that's Foundations. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Henderson, and she's going to speak about another ELA program that we have here at Miller. Thank you, Ms. Gillis. Hi, everyone. Hi, families and friends. My name is Emily Henderson. I am, I'm, I'm in my first year here at Miller, but I previously taught in New York City and in Westchester County. And I'm actually coming to you from IDE Corp, where I was an instructional coach. Um, if we could just go back to the good readers slide. Thank you. So Good Habits, Good Readers is the basis for our reading instruction, and it's organized around seven units of study that are teaching our students habits and strategies that successful readers use. Each unit is going to explore a weekly theme along with some new vocabulary and lessons in fluency. Our students are going to focus on these habits and strategies, and we encourage them to do so at home as well. And students are taught to apply all of these lessons to their own reading. Another program that we use for reading is Raz Kids. It's an ebook program and it has over 800 leveled ebooks and other reading resources. Raz Kids allows students to read the materials at their own pace. It allows them to record their voices as they read and also to listen to the text. We're going to be using Raz Kids to track student progress throughout the school year. Up next is Mrs. Goodman, who's going to talk to you a little bit about Writer's Workshop. Hi everyone, my name is Beth Goodman and this is my 25th year teaching, most of them here at Miller. Today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about Writer's Workshop. We begin with our launch unit where we start building a writing community. We cover the basic writing skills, learning how to write different kinds of sentences, uh, complete sentences and then expanding or popping, you might hear your child say, as they take a simple sentence and they add details to make it clearer. 
As we continue using the basic writing skills throughout the year, we will work on personal narratives, poetry, creative writing, and some nonfiction writing pieces. Students will be introduced and become familiar with what forms a good paragraph. And we will work on developing our paragraphs by planning, writing a draft, revising, editing, and producing a final copy. Throughout the year, we will learn how to respond to reading as well. Weekend news or week weekend recount, as some of us call it here at Miller, is among a favorite of second graders. Here they get to use what they learn and apply it to everyday writing. Sometimes we're able to take one small event and write a whole lot about it, and we enjoy sharing it with our classmates. And on to Ms. Amendola, thank you. Hello, second grade families. My name is Vanessa Amendola, and I've had the privilege of teaching here at Miller for 18 years. I'm going to share information with you regarding social emotional learning, which is often referred to as SEL. These lessons will be delivered grade wide by the classroom teachers on virtual Wednesdays. We will be implementing a district wide program from the Yale Center of Emotional Intelligence called RULER. As you can see, RULER is an acronym for the five key skills of emotional intelligence. Research shows that RULER reduces problem behavior, promotes positive relationships, and improves academic achievement. RULER includes four primary tools. The Mood Meter is a self and social awareness tool that we will be using to label our emotions and also those of others. The Charter is an agreement that a group makes together. As a matter of fact, your child will be participating in the creation of their class charter tomorrow. Meta moments are a process for extending the time between the experience of an emotion and how we respond to that emotion so that we can hopefully make better choices. And lastly, the blueprint helps us to problem solve conflicts effectively. Finally, I'd like to share with you just an outline of the units that will be addressed this year. And I also invite you to look in your child's folder this week for a flyer that's coming home with more information about this program. And now my colleague, Mrs. Adjudge, will share the science curriculum. Good evening, parents and families. I'm Anne-Marie Adjudge, and I've been teaching at Miller for 33 years. I started out as a third grade teacher where I taught for 14 years before becoming a special ed consultant teacher where I worked for several years, then on to remedial math for grades K to four. And now I've been in second grade for the past four or five years. So when you hear science, um, you think of hands-on and fun and the children love when I say it's time for science because they know they're going to be experimenting. What we use is Science 21, and it's a wonderful program. It was designed by teachers, which I think really makes it great because it's teachers who are using it. Um, of course, it is aligned with the New York State standards. Um, the children engage in sense-making of discipline, disciplinary science phenomena by using the science and engineering practices and cross-cutting concepts. The program's major emphasis is on investigations that are student-directed and relevant to students' everyday lives. The program's focus is to have students engage in minds-on and hands-on science tasks and integrate practices of ELA, math, social studies, where they fit naturally. The three units of study that we cover in second grade are structure and properties of matter, land and water, fast and slow earth changes, and interdependent relationships in ecosystems. We also have another program that we will be using this year to help support the students. It's Generation Genius, which is an online program that is wonderful in science. And I think that the children will be able to receive a lot of content through this and will be a great support to all of us as teachers. Thank you. And now we have Ms. Murray, who will speak to you about social studies. Good 
Sorry, I'm Maria Murray. This is my third year at Miller. I'm at my 15th in education. Uh, social studies this year is very exciting. Uh, we do have a textbook, which is the, the uh, center of our, our, our study. It's called the Children, A Child's Place, the Units of Study. We do have other resources that we use to supplement, such as Brain Pop Junior, Scholastic News, and Pebble Go. Uh, we do have several units of study. Uh, unit one, we belong to many groups, is really about community. Uh, unit two gets into more about geography and has an essential question of how does where you live affect how you live. Uh, unit three is uh, focusing more on economics, words like producers and consumers. We just dis uh, discuss what are taxes, which is eye-opening for our second graders. Um, the next unit is a little bit more about government, uh, general U.S. history, and some um, the big ideas of our branches of government. Uh, unit five, being a good citizen, is really a deeper dive into the citizen uh, responsibilities and uh, government. The last unit is research, where we combine some skills of English language arts with social studies and do some research about the different symbols of America. And uh, we do have a focus on map skills and geography throughout all of our units. Uh, the students will be able to identify continents and oceans, the equator and hemisphere, uh, hemispheres and things like that throughout, throughout the year in, within our uh, different units of study. And I think back to Mrs. Palumbo. Yes, there we go. Um, just a friendly reminder that we do have a snack time every morning. We eat snack before we go to lunch. So just remember, please, to send in a healthy snack each day for your children, something that they can open up on their own. We use our snack time as a chance for children to socialize with each other, take a um, mask break, and work on their independent skills, and of course, our table manners. If you weren't able to make it to the special area Meet the Teacher Night presentation, this is a list of all of the teachers from the different special areas. It is a little bit different this year because your children will be sticking with the same special area teacher um, for a four week period. So if they have library, they're going to have library for four weeks and then after that rotation, they switch to a different special. So just some housekeeping and miscellaneous items. Please, please make sure your child brings their Chromebook every day to school and it's also charged each night. Um, headphones are a big commodity in school this year. We need them every day. So sometimes they tend to break. A suggestion might be to pick up a bunch, um, five below or dollar store ones work great in our Chromebooks. Um, dismissal changes, if you have any, uh, if you're picking your child up early or they're dismissed in a different manner, if you'll please send a note as soon as you know so that we can um, let the office know. Please check Seesaw every day for work to finish. Please send your emails, continue to send emails to communicate with us and we'll get back to you as quickly as possible. And assessments are given, not New York State assessments, but assessments from every subject area will be given either paper, pencil or online. And then just to close out, we just wanted to remind everybody of the Zoom etiquettes when your children are Zooming in, whether it be a live class Zoom or on Wednesday Zooms. Um, this is a list of, of some of them, but really what we want you to make sure that you're focusing on is that your children come to Zoom just as they would if they came to school, dressed and prepared, ready to learn, have all of their materials ready with them, be seated in a place where they can do their work that is free from distraction. Um, remember to be respectful of classmates and teachers keeping their microphones off unless asked to unmute themselves. So we enjoy seeing all of the students, whether it's in person or on Zoom. And we are looking forward to all of the great learning that we're going to do this year. Thank you all for tuning in and being with us. And we hope that you have a good night. Thank you.